I'm Julian, this is Last Week from the Near Future Laboratory, episode 002, the show where we look at some highlights from, you know, last week in the Near Future Laboratory. Let's go. Okay, number one, Daniel Schmachtenberger. Daniel Schmachtenberger. Been listening to a bunch of tape from Daniel Schmachtenberger. He's got a bit of a touring set. Check out this clip. We know how to split an atom now. Wow. Like, we go back through the high school physics of how small an atom is. And the fact that we have figured out how to split an atom, to actually how to do fusion, right? How to, how to do this at the level of the nucleus of an atom. And we know how to modify genomes of species and make new synthetic life that never existed before. And the fact that we know how to reverse engineer brains and make these massive neural networks that can do exaflops per second of calculation, we are the major geologic force shaping the surface of the planet at this time in the Anthropocene. That's a lot of fucking power that we have from our intelligence. What would it mean for our species to be wise enough to steward that power safely? So why have I been listening to Schmachtenberger? Well, his consilience project is a welcome respite and source of insights into how to manage existential crises beyond deep breathing exercises. And we need to do more than deep breathing exercises. Number two, speculative cartography. Fabian posted a brief link to a project called Mercado San Telmo. And I only know what it says in the paragraph here because there's not much more to help me get what's going on. It says, based on research on the future of gastronomy, we created a speculative map that rethinks San Telmo market in Buenos Aires as a hub for culinary innovation. Check out the link. I love this kind of work that translates research into some kind of design fiction artifact. In this case, it's not really a design fiction artifact. It feels a little bit flat on the page to be looking at a PDF as opposed to even looking at a little booklet or something of that sort. So I'm not really getting the translation of the ideas. There's just too much that isn't felt. It's just kind of a lot of reading that needs to be done. Number three, David shared a post on Ars Technica, Apollo Flight Controllers 101. Every console explained. Beautiful. Love consoles, especially when they manage things going to other worlds. Number four, JMO posted that he'll be attending the Autonomous World Assembly. Autonomous worlds are not just worlds that happen to exist on chain, but worlds that could not exist otherwise. In light of the current explosion approaches, the Autonomous Worlds Assembly invites voices from across the field to gather, evaluate the progress that has been made, and articulate the path forward. Nice. Number five, Chris shared an article he wrote called A Smart Home is One That Talks to Itself with yammering smart devices imbued with the capabilities of large language models like ChatGPT so that now smart home devices are able to create context aware communal computing. Hey Alexa, he imagines a future where smart homes rely on agent-to-agent -agent interactions with devices responding to specific contextual needs. Chris being Chris also insightfully raises concerns about potential challenges, such as brand competition and need for better device control. Number 5.5, Chris is slang this week. He also hosted an awesome session of this game called Microscope, where we imagined into a possible mythopoiesis of something called Near Future Laboratory. It was super fun and engaging to gather folks from the Discord and develop a collective collaborative vision of what we're trying to build. We developed these moments and defining attributes based on a simple set of rules, all done in dialogue with each other. It was pretty awesome and he's gonna host another one. Check out the link to the Microscope game. It's basically a set of rules for collaborative imaginings. Number six, sci-fi tropes. Simeon shared a GitHub repo he grapples that is a catalog of science fiction tropes. The driving idea is that by quantifying different images of the future that appear in science fiction and other media, we can begin to explore different relationships between images of the future and our ways of imagining. And you quickly see how our imagination is largely on rails. It's as if you have to see a future in science fiction before you can imagine it, which is part of the point of my new book. It's time to imagine harder, so get yourself a copy right away. Number seven, Leela shared this one that belongs in the not a whole lot new here and also very, very important to be reminded over and over. The article discusses how generative AI systems like Midjourney often produce biased stereotypical images when given prompts related to different countries and cultures. Highlights examples where AI generated images reinforce stereotypes. So the question here is how do we make these biases transparent so at least we can be aware of them rather than just accepting them as is? I think these AI systems need a frequently asked questions list. That isn't just about the technical details. Number eight, Dre's Sci Friday, typeset in the future. A glimpse at glyphs, <laughs> a glimpse at glyphs, a glimpse at glyphs that feel into a time beyond our years. Dre posted up some fonts he's designed that are reflective of the science fiction films he enjoys. Check out that link and pick up some fun fonts. Helvetica is dead, long live Helvetica, and the grid, and everything else that's now boring. Number nine, 
Dre and I are going to host a work kit of design fiction digital edition prototyping session this Wednesday at noon Pacific time. So actually, that's not from last week, although we did post about it last week. If you're curious about the work kit and want to give the online and digital edition a try, join us. It'll be on Zoom over the Internet, and you'll need to get a ticket, even though it's free, so we know who to send a link to. No Zoom bombers, please. Link is down below. Number 10. Gabby posted a video from an event that the Glasgow School of Art Highlands and Islands Campus organized for educators for a professional learning event called Creative Thinking in the Learning Context. Participants were shipwrecked on Solar Punk Island. How cool is that? And after survive and sustain a new habitat. Participants described it as transformative and an amazing way to learn about skills, resources, and the use, how play can shape education, and getting away from the textbook chalk and talk model. Okay, that's it. That was last week from the Near Future Laboratory Discord. Please support all the work by picking up something over at shop.nearfuturelaboratory.com and backing me on Patreon over at patreon.com slash nearfuturelaboratory. That's it. See you next week. Bye. Upper snow, please bear in mind critical post launch operations will be in progress after successful launch, so please keep fire room activities and noise to a minimum. After T minus 20 minutes, all problems or trends that require a countdown clock hold will be reported to entity on 212 together with recommendations. After T minus 5 minutes, any hold manual or DOS.